If you want to hear the truth about the Gamer Girl Bathwater 8 scandal, then stick around to the end of this video. Hello and welcome to another exciting lesson here on Horror History. My name is Light Yagami and today we're going to be looking at one of Pennywise's most trusted allies, a so-called gamer girl with ties to Satan, whose publicity stunts and money-making schemes have taken the internet by storm on multiple occasions, who has battled massive entities like Mark Zuckerberg, the Brighton Police Department, and PewDiePie, and whose bravery and valiant efforts saved the life of a hamster one time, I am of course referring to Belle Delphine. In order to understand how she came to be, we've got to start at the beginning, so let's take it back back to the birth of Belle. Mary Bell Kirshner was born on October 23rd, 1999 in Cape Town, South Africa. She was born with a dislocated hip that required extensive surgery, which likely saved her from a life confined to a wheelchair and gave her the ability to do this. Kirshner's father was a Caucasian man who married a multiracial Japanese woman, and by the time of their daughter's birth, they were living in South Africa. The Japanese heritage of Belle's mother likely had a large impact on her interest culturally, because she's known for her anime-style cosplays, which include anime and Japanese video game characters, and perhaps her most notable pose in these photographs is her Ahegao faces, which are a staple of Japanese hentai. She's also been known to sketch illustrations of manga and Japanese video game characters. Her mother's influence on her life may have stretched further than that, though. In an Instagram Q&A, Belle revealed that her mother has taken some work as a model, and that this experience made her mom more accepting of her career choice. I wouldn't be surprised if this worked both ways, and Mrs. Kirshner's early modeling work helped inspire some of Belle's thoughtery. As a young girl, Belle spent a lot of time exploring outdoors and loved hiking mountain areas and beaches. So when she moved to Brighton in the United Kingdom and didn't have easy access to these scenic areas in nature, she took to the internet to entertain herself. It was here that Belle would realize the power of the internet, but she did not yet know the extent at which the World Wide Web would alter the course of her life. Belle showed the wit, intelligence, and creativity that she would later use to build a $500,000 business early on in her school days, where she was constantly at the top of her class in nearly every subject, with the exception of English. And if her Patreon page is any indication, she hasn't been able to improve her English skills in the years that would follow. Screen shooting is not a word. There's a comma missing after hamsters, there should not be a comma here, and that's the worst use of an apostrophe I've ever seen. You're my king and you're helping me unbelievable. Thank you so, so much. It is possible that the grammatical errors on her Patreon are part of the Lolita aspect of her character, but I'll get back to that when we get there. First, Belle would demonstrate her drive to be successful and make money by beginning her first job at the age of 13, and she worked many jobs from a young age, including being a barista, a dishwasher, and waitress among others. I find it interesting that waitress was among the jobs that she held, even at the young age of 13, because it's one of the few professions in English culture where an employee who plays their cards right can typically make a few extra pounds from customer tipping. In England, where I'm from, tipping is seen as optional. I wouldn't be surprised if she picked up a few tips and tricks, pun definitely intended, that she could use to make some extra money in another tip-friendly venture of hers down the line, her premium Snapchat. The year following her 14th birthday in 2013 was a life-changing one. She dropped out of school, started her own Facebook page, which she named Tinker Smell, which she would use to share selfies of herself and friends online, and started a relationship with a girl named Hannah. The relationship with Hannah, along with the fact that she abandoned her education, may have been a contributing factor to her leaving home a year later at the age of 15 to move into a shared household. It was here that she started her first Instagram account, and on March 27th, 2015, she would make her debut on the gram, which would eventually become her most successful social media account. This also marked an aesthetic change, which featured more goth-looking photographs with piercings and fake tattoos. She seemed to be heavily influenced by the style of alternative pop artist Melanie Martinez. Belle's relationship with Hannah would go on another year after that, but when Belle was 16, it was over. It was around this time that the stage name Belle Delphine was adopted, and she began to make a more conscious effort to brand herself in a specific way. I think this was the most important moment in her career. The moment that Mary Bell Kirshner died and Belle Delphine was born. This was more than just a name change. This was the creation of a character, and the portrayal of this wacky character is the reason that she's successful today. Belle realized that on social media, your most valuable asset is the attention of your audience, and having an outlandish character, an exaggerated extension of oneself, is an effective way to garner that attention. Combine that with the increasingly revealing outfits in her posts, and Belle Delphine had a recipe for success, but it would take some time before her first big breakthrough. In the meantime, she took up babysitting. Now, I don't know what parents took a look at Belle Delphine and decided, you know what, I think we should hire her to look after our baby. I mean, roll the clip. 
And here is my lovely doll. So I actually put my actual human hair. I've also got some baby arms and some baby legs. But to be fair, that clip wasn't online at the time she was babysitting. She started her YouTube channel on July 30th, 2016, and in August, she would post her only video of that year, a makeup tutorial that seems to be nothing more than a makeup tutorial that would bring in 90,000 views through its first two years. Hi, I'm Belle, and today I'm gonna be doing my everyday eye makeup for you. But like great character YouTubers like Dax Flame and Miranda Sings before her, I think she realized that she had to start off a little bit normal and show us that descent into the occasionally morbid kawaii e girl that we know her as today. She used some of her babysitting money to fund a van tour through France. I guess she was a few years early on the whole hashtag van life trend. I mean, I can only imagine how successful her how I shower in a van video would have been considering the demographic of her audience. In October of 2017, about one week before her 18th birthday, Belle would undergo a curious procedure that would physically change her appearance forever and be the subject of countless conspiracy theories and speculation. In the photo, is that a plane? F that's a plane. In the photos leading up to October 17th, 2017, two things are apparent. First, she's really leaning into the innocent childlike aspect of her character by posing with toys and wearing shirts that say baby girl or daddy's girl. And the second, she seems to have perfect teeth. At least the top row doesn't look like it needs any work, which made it very curious when she posted a photo wearing braces, which she supposedly got for free, not sure why, but this led to a lot of speculation about her motives. She was only one week from turning 18, and I think the braces were a stunt to revitalize her Lolita image as she moved into adulthood. She has, on multiple occasions, used the Lolita culture as part of her character. In one video wearing a Lolita shirt. I've also got my Lolita book. And it just seems like she feels like that's an important part of her character because despite marketing herself as an adult symbol, she never technically crosses into adult content. Instead, opting to do memes and just straight up weird stuff. Like, the whole thing is really more of a satire act than anything, even if that's not what some of her paid patrons are probably there for. <sighs> But I think that's kind of what makes the next two years of her story so funny, is that there's just like this sharp contrast between what she claims to be doing and what she's actually doing. Because immediately after getting the free braces, she starts posting the Ahegao photos. And if you're not familiar with Japanese culture, Ahegao is basically this trope that's seen a lot in hentai or adult-only manga, used to denote a woman who's feeling extreme pleasure. So this becomes Belle's new moneymaker. And I'm not talking about Monopoly money, because in March of 2018, she would open a Patreon, where she would allow the internet's thirstiest gamers and most desperate YouTubers to donate money or pay a monthly fee for lewd photos, and for $25, these incels could gain access to her entire collection of Ahegao content. The account had over 1,000 patrons within six months, and with the average pledge up around $6.70 at the time, Belle was probably earning over $7,000 per month on Patreon alone. And that's before you factor in large one-time donations, like the $2,500 that Will N.E. paid her to make a video to help him in the subscriber battle with Morg's mom. Tonight! Please turn that off. And the three grand that Pyro sent donated in hopes that Belle would play Fortnite with him. Nice cover story, Pyro. Rise up, people. We need to stop Morg's mom. Rise up, gamers! But between her now booming Instagram, her lucrative Patreon, and her exploding TikTok that earned her a spot on roughly 75% of all TikTok compilation thumbnails on YouTube, Belle Delphine had officially reached meme status, with the most popular Belle Delphine memes being this Ahega one and her take on Nyan Nyan cosplay's truly transcendent TikTok dance, Hit or Miss. Hit or miss. Yeah, truly an artist of our time. Kill me. <laughs> in September 2018, Belle would finally come out with her second YouTube video. And in typical Ethot fashion, it's a room tour. So, in typical member of the male species fashion, I'm gonna roll it. Okay, I thought Sofia Coppola knew how to start off a movie when she made Lost in Translation. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding! But the room tour is a great example of what makes Belle as interesting as she is. The majority of her room is overwhelmingly cutesy and kawaii, which just makes it ten times better when she reveals her wall of animal skulls, the paddle, masochistic treatments of teddy bears, and collection of firearms. It's a really weird designed house, but excuse the gun. Okay, I'm suddenly regretting memeing on her for now. I mean, at least she's over in the UK. It's not like you can get a gun into the US, right? 
Before the year's end, Bell would find herself in the news after a fake article titled Judge Orders Premium Snapchat Model to Pay 60000 in Taxes to IRS After Multiple Reports by Internet Users was released. And although the website Hustlers.com is known for its satire articles, the general public did not know that, and the story picked up a fair amount of traction. And I think seeing this buzz over her in the media gave Bell an idea. A light bulb went off in her head, despite this hilarious comment, and it helped her form a new PR strategy going forward in 2019, which would be her craziest year ever. She kicked it off with an appearance on the then biggest channel on YouTube by posting a dance to PewDiePie's famous T-Series diss track, which he then reacted to and obviously used her image in the thumbnail for those game reviews. Thank you, Belle Delphine. Very cool. Now I can use her in the thumbnail for millions of extra views. Thank you, Belle Delphine. This is a blessing. She would spend most of the first five months of that year planning and creating a library of content. Remember how I said that she has to start with something relatively tame, but then slowly descend into madness? Well, on June 14th, she reached the bottom of that descent when she uploaded her third YouTube video titled, Meet My Best Friend. Oh, okay, this is nice. She's just making some manga sketches with her friend. Oh, she's actually pretty good. Okay, it's a dead octopus with googly eyes. And she's touching it, and it's touching her food, and it's getting all over her bath. More on that later. Okay, not gonna lie. I'm kind of jealous. Two days later, she joined Twitter so that she could broadcast to a wider audience than those just following her on Patreon. But it would be Instagram, her biggest platform with over 4 million followers, where she would make her next big announcement. On June 16th, 2019, she posted a photo with the caption, If this video gets 1 million likes, I'll actually make a Hub account. The time has officially come. Tag your friends slash dad to help you. To which the Hub themselves were ecstatic, and so was the internet. So four days later, the photo had reached 1 million likes, and Belle stayed true to her word and created an account on the Hub. She would upload a total of 12 videos, which I will show after the break. I'm not going to repeat the titles of Belle Delphine's upload on the Hub, but as promised, I will show you some of the footage of the clickbait videos that she posted there. Like this one where she plays with a pair of large chickens, this one where a mysterious hand helps her cook, kind of, and complete an iDubs meme. Osteoporosis. Or this one where she squirts a water gun while wearing a squirtle shirt. If you didn't believe what I said about her being more of a performance artist than an actual adult model, I think these 12 videos will set the record straight. There's even one where she just simply eats a burger on camera, a reference to a famous video that the artist Andy Warhol made in 1982 where he does just that. Roll it. Okay, that's enough. Stop rolling it. Okay, seriously. Stop rolling it. So Yeah, despite her hub content having no actual graphic content, some of her audience seemed to have no issue with that. But the videos were majority downvoted. Even the one where she eats a picture of PewDiePie. Which got her another reaction from him on that week's episode of Lawai. PewDiePie goes all the way inside Belle Delphine. Marzia. Pizza time <laughs> The videos on the hub would bring in between 300,000 and 3.6 million views at the time of recording. And more importantly, it got a lot of people talking about Belle Delphine. However, there would be one unintended side effect. Later that month, the hand of Mark Zuckerberg taketh away, and Instagram struck down her account. This had a deep, emotional toll on the 19-year-old social media star. Actually, I made that up. Why the f*** am I even making this video? But her next big business venture, which would become her biggest business venture, was right around the corner. On July 3rd, 2019, Belle Delphine announced on Twitter, I am now selling my bathwater. This is what humanity has come to. Smiley emoji, get yours here, www.belledelphinestore.com. The bathwater, which went for $30 at the time, sold out in under 8 hours. People paid money to acquire water. Water. I, I can't. I, I really can't. And you can't blame Belle for taking advantage of a business opportunity, but who are these people? How desperate do you have to be? So after the bathwater sold out, a number of things happened. First, she became a meme. Again. Everyone was making bathwater videos, some real, some fake, some drinking the Gamer Girl bathwater. My friends Mr. Creepypasta and Vincent Vanikava even did a creepypasta narration video about it. You should have seen her. Pink hair, the tightest little body, those eyes. Those big, round anime eyes, 
She was like a hentai drawing come to life. Then the accusations started coming out. A headline was posted to Twitter from an account posing as the British newspaper Daily Mail, which said over 50 people have reportedly contracted herpes after drinking Instagram star Belle Delphine's bathwater. Like the fake IRS scandal, some people believed it and rumors once again spread. And for a couple days there, it seemed like a fact and most of us were wondering if she was gonna get sued. And there were actually multiple fake reports that floated around after that. And then over the past few days, the news broke and I'm saying news because it's not a real thing. But it broke that one person sent to hospital after drinking internet personalities bathwater. Some people started to figure out that this was a hoax on July 9th when the fact checking website Snopes.com verified the information as false, also citing subsequent tweets from the Twitter account that started it. Between July 7 and July 9, at Bake Rises intermittently tracked how their hoax tweet had caused the number of their followers to explode, while another tweet explicitly stated, it seemed the best way to grow on Twitter was to impersonate a company and say things about a celebrity that can legally be considered liable and I could potentially be sued for. And have wiser words really ever been spoken? Don't answer that. The next day, Belle cleared everything up when she officially made a statement, putting the rumors to rest. But I do have to commend her on the decision to wait one week before doing so and take all the free press. She may have gotten the idea for selling bathwater from the Matt Groening show, Disenchantment, where a man known as the decrepit peddler has a similar business. Pea flavored water, 15 cents. Come taste my knees. 15 cents! Now this could be a coincidence, but I'm thinking it's not, because in one of her photos, she's wearing a t-shirt referencing a segment from Matt Groening's previous show, Futurama. Oh my god, there's Jake Finkelberg. He's so hot. I wish he wasn't my brother. That always makes me laugh. I love Futurama. Also, I think Belle Delphine could make an awesome cosplay of Princess Tia Bini from Disenchantment. I mean, they just somehow kind of look alike. Eventually, the bathwater came back into stock at a much higher price point, along with the $50 Gamer Girl chewed gum and the $10,000 Gamer Girl pee. She actually felt the need to put the disclaimer, this is not for drinking. So even as the bathwater thing evaporated, Belle continued to gain notoriety when Ethan Klein came up with a new disgusting product idea on his weekly show, The H3 Podcast. So what I was proposing to her is that if you will make a tier award, call it Ethan tier, <laughs> above God, and the reward is I will fart in a mason jar and mail it to you. So Ms. Delphine, if we want to call her that, decided to send Ethan a mystery box, which he received on July 21st and opened on the podcast. Hello H3H3, I hope you got my little box, and no it's not my dirty socks. It's a little weird, I must admit, but I sent you a bottle of my own. Oh, it's a poem. It's not what you're thinking. Ethan and Hila received a jar full of Gamer Girl spit, along with a flash drive containing the proof that this is actually her spit. Oh, and a hat. Honestly, it's a pretty nice hat. The podcast netted 1 million views, and the VOD added another 1.6 mil. Guess who was featured on the thumbnails? It wasn't Jason Blum. So that's basically the peak. I mean, there was this thing in late July or early August where she supposedly was hospitalized while vacationing in Greece, but who knows if that actually even happened. But at least she looks hot in the photo. Then there was October 7th, where she claimed to have been arrested, and went on to explain. I swear this girl came into my party and stole my hamster. I have no idea why, or who the frick does that. I spray painted the heck out of her car and got arrested. At least I got my hamster back. Not too many big YouTubers fell for it this time, but if enough small YouTubers talk about it, then she can still get a decent amount of attention from it. And that's exactly what happened. She's now in a never-ending cycle of outrageous PR moves, which are boosted by thirsty gamer boys talking about it, which then leads to another outrageous PR move. Her net worth is reportedly over 500 grand, and she continues to post weird stuff and grow her ever-expanding fan base. So that concludes today's lesson on horror history. If you didn't drop out like Belle Delphine did, then your assignment is to like this video, and let me know in the comments who I should cover on the next horror history. If you want to see my analysis of other horror characters, then click that playlist on the left, and remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring that death bell, Delphine, for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. And if you're wondering why I did a horror history on an ethos, you might want to check the date of this upload, assuming we both survive.